We have got an early lock time for today in MLB DFS with the main slate on FanDuel locking at 12.20 p.m. Eastern. So we're going to breeze through this podcast for today, let you know which plays I am zeroing in on over on FanDuel and get you on with your day to get those lineups in before that early lock time. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire here to break down the seven game main slate here for Thursday with lock set once again for 12 20 PM Eastern. This includes games through the twins and Mariners game around 3 PM Eastern. So those games included in the main slate, luckily no weather involved on that slate. So we can play things pretty straight up. We'll dive into top pitching options and more here in just one second. But first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed, wherever you get your podcast. We were here every weekday talking MLB DFS, PGA DFS each week and USC for the big events as well via Austin Swaim. Get all that by subscribing to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. The U.S. women's soccer team is taking on the world, and you can take home bonus bets every time they win with FanDuel because right now new customers get $100 in bonus bets guaranteed plus another $10 in bonus bets for every Team USA win. Sign up between now and August 3rd. Then place your first $5 bet to unlock your bonus bets. That way, you'll be all set to bet on everything from total goals to player props all tournament long. However you want to play, don't miss your chance to get $10 in bonus bets for every Team USA win, plus $100 in bonus bets guaranteed. Make every moment more with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Yeah. Must be 21 plus and president select states. First online real money wager only $10 deposit required. Refund issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. Fanduel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Massachusetts. Hope is here. Gambling helpline MA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-N-Y or text hope and y In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WIPIT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. Or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Thursday main slate. Spencer Strider checks in with the highest salary on FanDuel. He checks in at $11,400, followed by Andrew Abbott at 10 8. Blake Snell is 10 6 with Pablo Lopez at 10 4. We got Zach Gallon at 10 2 facing the Braves. George Kirby against the Twins at 97. Corbin Burns, 93. Chris Bass at 9,000 flat with Alex Cobb, Taiwan Walker, Michael Lorenzen, and Michael Kopech as the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, to me, the top two pitching options today are obvious, and those guys are Spencer Strider and Blake Snell. The big question is how we rank them. So uh, what I'm going to do today is go through the pros and cons of both guys, then I'll discuss my view of them at the end as our top two studs of the day. We'll start with Strider, who is at home against the Diamondbacks, which is not a great matchup. They have a 109 a WRC plus against righties with a 20% strikeout rate, and it's also 99 degrees, which is great weather for hitting, and that's a downgrade for Strider. But Strider has been using fewer change, a few more changeups his past 11 starts, and the results in the time have not been great. He has a 4.50 ERA, but the peripherals are still really nice. 2.86 skill interactive ERA, 36% strikeout rate. Typically, when you get situations where the results are much worse than the peripherals, it says the bad at ball data is bad. But that's actually not really the case here because Strider's let up just a 35% hard hit rate across his 11 starts. So I think he's gotten a bit unlucky, honestly, but it is still a tough matchup in bad weather. Snell's matchup is not great either. Either he's facing the Blue Jays on the road. Jays have just a 19% strikeout rate against lefties. So both these guys are facing low strikeout teams, but the Jays also have just a 120 ISO against lefties. That's not as daunting as what 
Strider is dealing with. And it's also only 74 degrees in Toronto, assuming the roof is open there. And Snell is also pitching great right now. He's been using fewer forcing fastballs and more curveballs the past eight starts. And in that time, he has a 2.53 skill interactive ERA with a 43% strikeout rate. But his batted ball data is also actually even better than Strider's. He's letting up a 23% hard hit rate with a 28% fly ball rate. And it's led to an 057 ERA. Snell has double digit strikeouts in five of these eight starts. So the results favor Snell. The matchup favors Snell. The weather favors Snell, but the venue, because Strider is at home, favors Strider. All things considered, I am going to go Snell first. Maybe that's dumb, but I care a lot about weather. And in this instance, the the weather does heavily favor Snell. So Snell will be my top guy. Strider is firmly in his tier. And to me, they're all pretty well ahead of the pack. I think there's one more guy you could maybe consider. Two more guys. We'll talk about them and things to watch. But to me... It's Snell 1, Strider 2, and then half a tier at least, down to everybody else. For the value play, I'm going to go Taiwan Walker. I do think you could consider Alex Cobb here, but Walker is at home and in a better matchup, and Cobb is in Cincinnati, tough park for pitching, so that's enough to give Walker the edge for me. Walker's facing the Brewers, who have a 90 WRC plus against righties with a 139 ISO and a 23% strikeout rate, so... It's not an amazing matchup. They're not as high strikeout of a team as they are against lefties, but it's definitely a good matchup regardless. Walker hasn't been consistently getting strikeouts, but he's looked really good his past 10 starts. In that time, he's throwing more cutters and more splitters. He has a 2.25 ERA. He has had some spike strikeout games. He's had eight strikeouts and three out of those 10 starts. But there have been some duds in there as well. That's fine. He's a value play for a reason. Uh, the results have been good. The strikeouts can be there. So it's kind of hard to nitpick to that that too much when his salary is $8,400. I would definitely rather pay for Snell or Strider, but um, I'm fine giving thought to Walker if you want to go nuts at hitter. So for me, prefer to spend up a pitcher for today because we have two really good ones in good situations. But if you want to spend down, Walker is my preferred option there. Let's dig in now to the stacks. We've been all over the Reds and Giants series this week, and it didn't work out very well last night, but did before that. And I think we can go back there once again today. Now, this may feel a bit odd, given that Andrew Abbott has the second highest salary on FanDuel. His ERA is 2.45. It may feel odd to stack against him, but his batted ball data says he's kind of flirting with disaster. And I think that allows us to get here on a slate that's pretty tough for stacking. Abbott has made eight starts so far, and in that time, he's let up a 61% fly ball rate, and a high fly ball rate by itself isn't a big issue if you get a lot of weak contact. But Abbott is also letting up a 43% hard hit rate. That's actually tied for the second highest mark on this slate. He's let up a 10.8% barrel rate, which is above average. It just hasn't hurt him always, consistently yet. He did have one clunker where he let up six earned runs to the Brewers, two home runs there. He also let up two home runs against the Brewers last week, and he let up a three homer game at home against the Rockies. So the batted ball issues have shown up in spurts for Abbott, and I think that could continue. The Giants have a 101 WRC plus against lefties. I think they're pretty interesting here. I like Abbott as a pitcher, and I would not be shocked if we're maybe using him as a pitcher next time out, potentially, but um, I don't mind stacking against him on this slate. The Giants have been pushing Patrick Bailey up in the order against lefties. Uh, the past three starts against lefties, Abbott or Bailey has hit fifth, fifth, and third. His early numbers against lefties are pretty good, so I get why they're doing that too. And because he's a catcher, he's less likely to get pinch hit for. So less concern with the Giants giantsing in that regard. And that's kind of what we should be looking for here. So if Bailey does play, it's a day game after a night game for a catcher. So that's always a concern. But I think it's all play at $2,900 if he does play. So Patrick Bailey, a guy I'd want to turn to if I do wind up stacking against Abbott for today. The Mets are facing Michael Kopech. And similar to Abbott, I like Kopech quite a bit. But he is in a massive, massive funk right now. He's walking a ton of guys. Didn't get out of the first inning in his most recent start. And he could bounce back because he has good qualities inside him. But I don't think the Mets are a bad stack given the slide that Kopech is in. 
Seven starts ago, Kopech started to throw more sliders, and it initially led to a big spike in strikeouts. But the walks in this time have been insane. He has walked four-plus batters in three of his past four starts, and he walked three in another. I don't know if he's fully right at the moment, and we can see blowups when that's the situation. And that's what we want for DFS. We want those spiral games, those games that get out of hand, and you know, you you're, suddenly you look up and it's uh, 11 nothing. Kopech has had some issues with hard contact in the past as well, so... I think we need to proceed with some caution in case the form does return for Kopech because it definitely could, but I'm still on board with stacking against him here in case he continues to struggle. Kopech's biggest strength is strikeouts, but he gets fewer of them against righties than lefties. So for the Mets, that's a plus for Pete Alonso, Tommy Pham. I think both those guys could be priorities here. Also good for Francisco Alvarez, especially as they continue to have him a, a bit higher up in the order. So if he plays, I think that Alvarez could work as well. But just in general, I think the righties are pretty good options for today against Kopech, assuming you're okay stacking against him. Now, that caveat is big because our top two stacking options are against Andrew, Andrew Abbott and Michael Kopech. Both these guys are good pitchers who can't get strikeouts. Our third guy is currently the co-favorite to win the Cy Young, and that's Zach Gallen. Uh It feels a bit weird to potentially stack against him given he is tied to strider as the best odds to win the nl Cy young but very tough matchup he looks a bit off right now and the weather is great for hitting so i do think we should be willing to stack against gallon here gallon started the year off scorching hot over the past 13 starts though he's been throwing more cutters with fewer curves and change-ups and he's probably doing that for a reason but it's led to some weird underlying numbers across a pretty large sample of 13 starts. In that time, Gallon has a 4.26 skill interactive ERA. He has led up a 44% hard hit rate with a 41% fly ball rate. His strikeout rate is also down to 22%. The ERA for Gallon is still 3.546, so it's much better than the peripherals, but he has had some rough starts. We let up five runs to the Tigers, eight total runs with five earned to the Pirates, Couple home runs to the Angels, and all those starts were on the road. Gallon's road ERA this year is 5.11 compared to 1.48 at home. And his strikeout rate also does decrease on the road to 22% versus 30% at home. This is a matchup on the road against a disgusting offense in very warm weather. So it feels odd to stack against a guy who, again, could win the Cy Young this year. And it might be dumb. That's very possible. But I do think it makes sense to stack against Gallon tonight or today, given the makeup of this lane. I'm willing to go there for tournaments personally. Similar to Kopech, Gallon has had a lower strikeout rate against righties and also lets up a higher ISO to them. So that benefits Ronald Acuna Jr., Austin Riley, Sean Murphy, Marcelo Zuna. And I think that, you know, if you're comparing these guys to uh, switch hitter Ozzy Albies, lefty Matt Olson, I think that might give the righties a small leg up in this dilemma. So to me, preferring the righties over the lefties for today, but pretty much at the green light for all Braves because this offense is good. And again, I know it's risky to sack against these really good pitchers, but I think that's the way to play things on tonight's sl or today's slate. Things to watch here among the Doug pitchers, the guy who might be best able to give Strider and Snell a run for their money is Pablo Lopez. Corbin Burns also in that discussion, but Burns gets the Phillies. Lopez has the Mariners. Mariners strike out more than the Phillies and have a slightly lower WRC plus. So I prefer Lopez over Burns among the rest of the pack, but it's really about the top guys for me. Jose Quintana is making his 2023 debut for the Mets revenge game here against the White Sox. He did pitch really well last year. Obviously, though, he's coming off an injury. He looked solid in his rehab starts, but not a ton of ground balls there. I think the White Sox are a consideration for stacking here. Probably should have had them within the top three, but decided to go have some fun uh, stacking against good pitchers instead. I think the White Sox, much better offense against lefties. 106 WRC+. plus. Realistically, they probably should be in the top three, but I like the hard contact profiles of the three guys we did discuss. Finally, the Royals are facing Michael Lorenzen, who has had decreased velocity over his past seven starts, and his results have still been really good in that time, especially against lesser teams, and the Royals are obviously that as well. But Lorenzen should let up a balls in play, uh, a lot of balls in play because of his low strikeout rate. The weather in Kansas City is good for hitting, so I don't mind them as another stack or potentially 
for some one-offs for today. So the Royals, another team to consider. The Met, the uh, the White Sox, team to consider as well. If you don't want to go against really, really good pitchers today, which I would understand for sure. Dinger calls for this Thursday slate. The boring one mentioned Michael Kopech's issues against righties. Reduced strikeout right there. Pete Alonzo is a righty in a big rut right now, but I feel like Alonzo is about to perk back up here pretty soon. So we'll go Pete Alonzo as a boring one, manifesting this for uh, some season-long teams that could use uh, Alonzo surging back to life. So we'll go Pete Alonzo as the boring home run call for today. The fun one, let's go Patrick Bailey. Again, Bailey does seem to have pretty good numbers against lefties so far in a small sample, moves up in the order. I think that's intriguing. Uh, if he does not play, I would go probably Wilmer Flores as the alternate option there. Luis Matos, kind of interesting too uh, for the Giants if he gets in there. So one of those fun Giants. Bailey, the primary one. Wilmer Flores, Luis Matos being the alternates within your Giant stacks, uh, within your dinger calls for today. That's all we got here on the solo shot. Again, lock is at 12 20 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you get those lineups in before then and uh, have some fun throughout your Thursday during work or whatever it may be. If you got any questions for me, I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. Don't forget to find these podcasts up on the FanDuel TV Plus app as well on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and Roku devices. Also over on the FanDuel YouTube page. If you like what you hear, leave us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. We'll talk to you all once again tomorrow to break down Friday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.